Hello, it is Monday, April 4th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Monday puzzle, so it should be fairly quick, fairly approachable today. We'll have to see. This edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to you by Jordan Larson, Michael H., and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you so much to the three of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. And if you'd like to join their ranks and get the uh, Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses coffee mug, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. But of course, if you back at any level, you get access to um, the extra channel in the Daily Solve Discord chat server, as well as um, access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up to date on the Patreon feed, as well as all the new ones that go up each week. So do check that out. And uh, let's, let's, uh, oh, and um, I always forget to say this at the beginning, do subscribe to the channel if you've not yet done so. That's free, of course. So thank you to everybody who has done so. It's nice to see those numbers creep up. So uh, now let's move on to the puzzle. This is a Monday puzzle, as I said, so it will be themed, but not too difficult. And it was created, it was constructed by Derek J. Angel, I suppose that is. This is Derek's second New York Times crossword, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. Why not? Part of the leg between the knee and the ankle, that would be one's shin, right? Many Balkan inhabitants, um, Serbs, right? And, oh no, sorry, Slavs. Slavs. And crazy in Cancun would be loco, enthusiastic, avid, I suppose. Yeah. An avid crossword solver, perhaps, an enthusiastic one. Oh, dinosaur. I wonder if this is theme related. It sort of looks like it. Dinosaur whose names whose name means Swift Caesar. I don't know. That'll be that will be interesting. I'm probably going to have to get, <laughs> this seems like the sort of theme I'm going to have to get through crosses. What about this? A squalid dwelling could be a hovel. And a sneaky devil, a sly fox, perhaps? In a standoffish manner would be icily. Why did I put a C there? Icily. And fall asleep on the couch, perhaps. You could nod off on the couch. Fall asleep on the couch, nod off. A hen house could be a coop. A coop, chicken coop. Oh, is it Velociraptor? Is that how you spell Velociraptor? Yes, it must be an I. That makes sense. Um, the Velocipart part presumably is the swift bit, and then Raptor must be Caesar, which sort of sounds appropriate. Handy Andy by another name. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm familiar with the phrase Handy Andy. Is that sort of a Mr. Fix-It sort of phrase. It seems like it might be. To go off course suddenly would be to veer, although this looks strange now. Ah, no, it doesn't. Certain athletic honorees for short would be MVPs, most valuable players. And hero bread would be uh, pita. You could have a uh, hero on pita bread. And a strap attached to a horse's bit would be a rein. The pita, by the way, would be um, pita here in the UK and often spelled with two T's. Crumbly salad cheese could be feta cheese. You might actually have that with, with that meal, perhaps. And loses it is snaps. You've lost it. You've snapped. A cause for a confession, a sin, I suppose. You could confess to a priest. Like the score 4-4, four, four, that score is tied, of course. What about this? Impose upon. It looks like foist upon. And that parenthetical upon means we're going to apply that word both to the clue, but also the answer. So impose upon, foist upon. Um, without the parentheses, it would only be applied to the clue. So oppose upon would have to match foist, not foist upon, if you see what I mean. Okay, here we have Genesis console maker, Sega Genesis, and steady equestrian gates could be trots, perhaps? Dinosaur whose name means winged finger. Uh, it looks like pterodactyl. Okay, so maybe, maybe I will be able to get some of these without fully um, having to cross them in order to do so. Alternatively, in a text could be O-T-O-H on the other hand, and then fooled is got. It looks right. I, they, they fooled me. They got me. Okay. One named singer called the Queen of Pop. It looks like Madonna, doesn't it? And lodging near a highway interchange could be a motel. 
A proverbial saying could be an adage, weathered old bromide. A bad smell is an odor. Blank Mahal certainly looks like Taj Mahal, the great uh, edifice. And a narcissist's problem would be one's ego. Here we have Les Mis, short for Les Miserables, of course. And then uh, Karate Studios are dojos. So that looks right. This is all proceeding pretty smoothly, I would say. Bonus performance, an encore. Could be a bonus at a, a, a um, concert, for instance. And loops into an online convo. You could uh, CC somebody on an email, carbon copy them on an email. Unacceptable. Not so, not so maybe? Not sure. What about this? To the blank degree. That end does look correct. To the nth degree. And blank of Troy could be Helen of Troy. I might, if you're willing to ask, try me. <laughs> uh, try me. I might solve this crossword. Indefinite quantity is some. Yeah. Oh, it's, if it's unacceptable, it's not on. That's just not on. It is unacceptable. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry, it's not. I guess that's more of a British thing. So this would be not okay, in fact, because Barbie's bow is Ken. There we have it. But this is another dinosaur, and it is. A dinosaur whose name means three-horned face. A triceratops, I bet. So what was this one again? Pterodactyl winged finger. Right, okay. And then triceratops with the three horns. Indeed, that's pretty good. Fun theme. Played a role, could be acted, played a role in a production. Buckingham Palace dog breed. Uh, Corgi, the queen has uh, famously corgis. Although I think she stopped acquiring corgis at this point. Um, Total Pro is an ace. Modern smokes could be e-cigs, modern cigarettes. Uh, Designer Chanel, Coco Chanel, the uh, design icon. And condition that may... Involve repetitive urges for short would be OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. An Easter decorating need is egg dye. And a reaction of silent but obvious disapproval, an eye roll. How about that? Card and auction maybe could be a repo. It could be repossessed and therefore being auctioned off. To rip something into bits is to shred it. And if something is reserved for a select customer, I suppose it's premium. Actress Ward, a cell award. I couldn't tell you what this person has uh, acted in, <laughs> played a role in, but certainly know the name. I've heard the name. Go by as time. So time elapses. So as time just means, it means go by when applied to time. Time elapses. Applied as foundation or powder could be daubed or dabbed. Let's put the ED in there and there's probably a B here. Blank a move, start dancing, bust a move. There we go. One who's easily shocked or scandalized. You might be a prude. If you're particularly prudish, you might be easily scandalized. Wake up little blank, 1957 hit for the Everly Brothers. Wake up little Susie, I think this will be. A classic song. And a buck or two are deer. You could have one buck or two bucks. Two uh, male deer. So Falco of Nurse Jackie, this would be Edie Falco, also of The Sopranos, and a perfuming compound is an ester, the sort of thing you see in crosswords, not infrequently, ester, per, an aromatic compound. Ah, and here we go, a dinosaur whose name means thunder lizard. Uh, this doesn't look quite right, does it? Or does it? I don't think so. Maybe this isn't premium. This does look like daubed, though, rather than dabbed. So reserved for a select... Oh, pre-sold, maybe. So perhaps it just means it's reserved for a particular customer. I think I was taking select, maybe indicating uh, some level of exclusivity, which is technically true in this case, but in a more general sense. The, the item has been, pre been pre-sold, so they're reserving it for that customer, the customer who pre-bought it. Uh, Jason's ship in Greek myth is, is the Argo, Jason and his Argonauts. King of this puzzle. Uh, hmm. Oh, T-Rex. <laughs> Very good. So king of this puzzle, um, this puzzle dealing with dinosaurs and uh, Rex, Latin for king, which is obviously what the Tyrannosaurus Rex, this, the Rex suffix means there. So that's a nice little theme tie-in. Fully cooked as steak would be well, well done. And crossed out, X'd out. To rudely stare could be to ogle. 
and filled with wonder could mean in awe. Ah, so Brontosaurus, Thunderlord, right. I would have I would have probably known almost all of these when I was a child, actually, but uh, w- without needing so many crosses. Because it's sort of familiar when I see them, Thunder Lizard. I really remember that one. Brontosaurus. Was Brontosaurus renamed Brachiosaurus? I believe so. I'm not certain if that was a different dinosaur or if it was renamed. Anyway, a loon or a dodo, each of those is a bird. Oh, this doesn't look great. Oh, no, it, it does. DL looked strange, but letters on a gear shift, right? So you could have park, reverse, neutral, drive, and what is L? Low, low gear, I guess. Um, Zoom for one is an app, maybe? The video conferencing app? And uh, science class for many future pre-meds. And of course, science being um, abbreviated here means we're also going to have some sort of abbreviation in the answer. So maybe AP Bio, Advanced Placement Biology. And the P of MPH would be per miles per hour. And a gem from an oyster would be a pearl. And then to prohibit something is to ban it. And there it is. So we have a nice... Another nice, simple, this was sort of like yesterday's theme in that we can solve it without needing to um, uh, determine anything about the theme or, or, or any any way the theme sort of connects. Uh, well, the clue, what I mean to say is that the theme clues are just regular clues, I suppose, and they're solved in the ordinary way. You just fill in the answer and that's it. You don't need to engage with the theme in any mechanical sense beyond that. So we had... Uh, Velociraptor, the swift Caesar, uh, pterodactyl, winged finger, triceratops, the three-horned face, and brontosaurus, the thunder lizard, plus this little bonus cross of the king, T-Rex, Tyrannosaurus Rex. So a nice, a nice simple theme. I wonder if these, I wonder if any of these dinosaur names are first entries in the New York Times crossword. I'm not sure. Well, why would I be sure? Yeah. But I don't know. But I wouldn't be surprised if at least one of them were. Uh, and that's that. A nice, simple, relatively gentle puzzle for Monday, I think. I think this this was pretty appropriately uh, tuned for Monday level of difficulty. Um, but let me know. Let me know if you, if you disagree. Uh, we do actually, you know, I should move on, I suppose, to yesterday's clues because there actually were several. So let's, let's get onto those. Um, some extra bits of, of knowledge and context. Um, All right, so Michelle McBride Charpentier writes in regarding the junk DNA uh, answer, um, which was said to to include, to to be what comprises 98% of the human genome. So uh, Michelle writes, one of my favorite podcasts is Science Friday, and in the most recent episode, they had a a a segment about how the human genome has finally been fully sequenced. Junk DNA came up, and the term was described as outdated and is just used as a way to explain processes we don't yet understand. So that's interesting, and that makes sense, as so many of so many things in science are when they uh, they seem like they're nothing, but maybe that's just because we don't exactly know what they're doing yet. Regarding SVHS, Super VHS, the format that was uh, appeared in yesterday's puzzle, the, the video format, JS says, as a short explanation, SVHS had better Luma resolution and bandwidth, resulting in better image quality. Makes perfect sense. Okay. Um, regarding my, uh, when I was discussing sheepish with the question mark, indicating a pun or wordplay in yesterday's puzzle, and I was thinking, well, sometimes the pun indicator means um, you actually have to take the word more literally rather than uh, more metaphorically because the sort of standard usage is the metaphorical one. Brian says, what you're getting at with sheepish is that the question mark is telling you to take the word the first way you think of, whether literally or figuratively, and then go the other way. So it's not really an indication about literally or figuratively, but an indication of the opposite of its common usage to get the pun effect. Yes, that's exactly right. And that is usually how I explain it. Um, I was sort of separately making an observation that sometimes counterintuitively, the pun version is actually the more literal version. And then I sort of got into a, a somewhat pointless digression about whether sheepish, you know, what the literal meaning of that is. So yes, I, I kind of got off topic there. But um, indeed, the pun indicator just means you have to go in the non-intuitive direction, usually. 
Uh, Matthew F. says, Our final across answer, answer X ante, might seem more familiar as X dash ante, so a hyphenated word, and as clued means based on forecasts or even before the event. The opposite is X post, which is actual or after the event. These phrases are probably most common in finance and economics and to a lesser extent in law. That is, an ex post facto law changes the legal ramifications of an event after it already occurred. Of course, this is generally not accepted in the modern world. So thank you, Matthew F., for that uh, concise and useful um, comparison of ex ante and ex post. And yes, I've heard ex post facto certainly before, but I never thought to connect it to ex ante. So very interesting. Okay, regarding uh, Kid Cuddy, which I pronounced more like cootie, like fella cootie or something like that, I think is probably what I was thinking of. Uh, pure rain explains um, cuddy, kid, in kid cuddy is pronounced cuddy for future reference. So there we go. Um, thank you for that that correction. Yes, I'm not, I wasn't as familiar with that, that, uh, that rapper. So thank you. And then uh, finally, Old Footer explains uh, wean, W-E-E-U-N, doesn't seem, uh, meaning a, a child, doesn't seem familiar to this Scotsman, Wean, yes, W-E-A-N, which comes from Wean. And uh, indeed, Wean would be the, uh, the, the closer sort of Scots, Scots-English um, uh, term. And I, I made a very tiny throwaway reference to a, uh, a sketch from Limmy's show. Limmy is a, a Scottish comedian who has a, um, a sketch uh, in which a character essentially just repeats the phrase, they've turned the weans against us, uh, ad, in, ad infinitum. And anyway, Lemmy's show is very good. So I had that little throwaway reference to it. But thank you, old fooder, which itself, I guess, is a Scottish phrase, which would mean, I guess, old, maybe not fool, but sort of old, I don't know, almost like a rascal or something like that. Um, or a, a nobody or a, I don't know, something along those lines. Anyway, um, that's that for yesterday's clues. Um, and that's it for today's puzzle, I suppose. So thank you for joining me. Thanks for joining me on this uh, Monday puzzle as we ease into our solving week. Of course, I'll be back tomorrow for the Tuesday puzzle, which should be similarly fairly approachable with a nice, fairly gentle theme, presumably. I hope to see you then. And until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Monday. Take care.